Coding for yourself versus coding at a company are two very different things. On the one hand, as a developer that's broke and without a job or even a potential of getting a job, uh, you don't really have to follow a process. Like all you really have to do, right, is code, make a GitHub repository, and then push to production and hope for the best that it doesn't impact your repository. And even then, right, you have zero users, so you don't even have to worry about that. While it's pretty easy doing it on your own, when you're working at a company, there are a lot of processes that you have to follow. And getting used to that as a brand new developer at the first job has been quite the experience. Like I didn't have any idea what was going on and it was quite weird for me to adapt. So what I like to do is just show you newbies how it works in the big tough world of regular software development. I'm kidding, I know nothing. And uh, I just wanted to show you the process and I'll actually show you the real life uh, repository and literally everything we follow uh, at the company I work at, cal.com. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. And so the first step in this process is to know exactly what we need to build and the steps we need to follow to make that that result, uh, you know, come to life. So generally speaking, this could be anything from a small feature to a really big one. Um, you know, for my role, you know, I'm a front end developer, so this could be a small tweak to a button or it could be a whole new page or even at a bigger uh, scale, it could mean an entirely new homepage and uh, changing up the entire UI. But it doesn't really matter in this video, you're just, you know, trying to know what the process is like. So uh, yeah, so we just need to know that and then we can get into coding. And so cool, so once we have an idea of what we need to code and the end result, the next thing we need to do is actually make a branch of the main GitHub repository that our company uses. And uh, basically, if you don't know, all a uh, GitHub branches, probably, most of you guys probably know this, right? I'd hope so. If not, I'm sorry if I offended you. Um, all it is, is a screenshot of the main GitHub repository. You don't really wanna be push, what am I saying? You don't wanna push into the main repository because for obvious reasons, you don't wanna break it. There's a lot of employees, a lot of people committing code that will often lead to uh, mistakes, conflicts, errors on your end. So you have to make a branch so that it can be reviewed and we'll get into that process. But for now, what we need to do is create a branch and to do that, all we have to do is do git, check out B and then the name of our branch. So what we're gonna do is just call this, uh, I don't know, post hog example uh, G or EG, all right? And so now we are in our own branch. We can basically do whatever we want here without really having to worry. Like we can push commits here, we can do everything we want, but this just gives us uh, kind of a safety net to make mistakes and make errors. And so now what we can do is literally just start coding. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do something random. Uh, I'm gonna import something called uh, post hog from post hog JS. Uh, this is just a uh, library, not a library. It's an event tracking thing for uh, analytics. So I'm just using it as an example because I've been working with it a lot. Um, and so basically, right now we're, we're adding our features. Uh, we just go as is. So let's say I go to like a random button. Um, let's just go with this one. I maybe have to like to do an on click like this. And then thanks to curse, I can just kind of have some AI generated code that I know is not the best. But anyways, here we just have an on click and I know you're not here for the, the code. Um, but once we have a feature like this done, uh, what we typically do, right, in our own personal projects is just push the code. We don't really have to worry about anything. But in our case, we're actually dealing with many coworkers in an open source project. You're dealing with a bunch of people. Um, you're dealing with a bunch of features. And the stakes are much higher because the product actually makes, you know, it makes the company money in, in a lot of cases as well the thing is used for people to also make money. So there's actual things you have to worry about when it comes to, you know, pushing code. And so what I typically like to do, and I think this is just a general uh, principle that a lot of people follow, is to ask yourself before pushing whether or not this code is firstly readable, secondly, can be uh, put into a component, shouldn't be put into a component that's reusable, just stuff like that, just so, it doesn't like down the line impact someone and you don't want that to be on you, right? Because people eventually, you know, find out that this was your problem. And so what I typically like to do is maybe in this case, can I make this on click into a separate function? Uh, maybe that, like if I'm working on an entire component, can I make the entire component to something reusable if it's on the front end? So just stuff like that to 
make your life and other people's lives easier in the future. People just appreciate that. But anyways, right? Once we have the code ready, we've optimized it to a certain extent. We've reviewed our own code. Um, in my case, what I'm doing at the company, we don't have to get the code quote unquote tested, but on this repository, uh, in many cases, we do have to get it tested. And actually, if you look at the repository here, you see a lot of tests here that you run in your terminal just to uh, you know make sure there's no issues. And some of these are auto tests as well, um, but you obviously have to get it tested. And actually, let's just go to one real quick. Um, let's just go to like test utils, Google calendar, whatever. Um, you'll just see a bunch of code and I'm not gonna act like I know exactly what's going on, but you can kind of imagine these tests, right? You, you run a command, it checks it and makes sure everything's okay. And in some cases I just said this, but it's uh, auto reviewed. So it just automatically does it. But typically you obviously need to test it and that's exactly what it's for. But in our case, we don't actually have to test anything because it's just one thing. Um, but what we have to do next is actually just push our code to this branch. So what we're gonna do is just add all our code and then we're gonna commit and we have to make it a good message. So let's just call this uh, on click post hog do not commit because we don't want this, uh, do not merge because we don't want that to happen. And then we're just gonna wait for this to load. Mm. While we're waiting, like and subscribe, it'd really go a long way. Uh, oh, cool. And then finally, we're just gonna do git uh, push origin, then our branch name, so post hog example eg. So with that done, right, our branch has been publicized and it is ready for review. So let's just go to the repository real quick and this will be in our branch. And so basically what you see here is a checklist of things. In many companies, this is what they actually do. But, you know, we have to read through this. So for example, we might provide a Loom video. It could be a, a fix that you're trying to, you know, solve. Uh, these are actually mandatory. So in a lot of cases, um, you have, you know, you have to show that you tested the code. Uh, you confirm that you've done everything that's like, you know, good principles, um, updated developer docs. You can see that just a bunch of things, right? It's kind of like guard 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 guardrails, guardrails to make sure that uh, everything's a okay. And so in this case, let's say we did everything here. What we'll do is just do a create pull request and then officially, right? It's just uh, ready to be reviewed by someone higher up. So what they will do, right, is they will then pull this branch into their own code base and then review the code. So they'll look at your code, make sure everything's okay. And literally 99% of the time, right? What will happen is they will have notes for you. So this is like the next step, but what they'll do is read over the code and then give you notes on how you can fix it. So let's say in our code, right? They're like, hey, Nazar, we don't like this feature. Please remove it. Or, hey, we don't like where it's being put. Or let's say, I don't know. Let's say it's like change the text here. So what we'll do is, oh, we got a note. Please change this. Uh, I'm going to do like instance booking. Maybe they want that. And then all I'd have to do is, again, just do the same process. Like get add, get commit. And then it's loading. Again, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. <laughs> it's loading. It takes a while. Um, and then we're just going to push origin. So that way it's pushed after and again, people can review it. And so at this point, we're basically like 99% there. Once we've reviewed it, once everything has been you know checked, things have been tested to make sure that nothing breaks. What we have to do, and this is not really from our end, but it will be merged. You see, I can't really merge because I don't have access and that's a good thing. I've actually merged into production once and it not end well. At this point, the code will just be merged and it'll be on the you know main app. And so yeah, that's really it. That's the process, that's the process we follow. Quick summary if you want, if you haven't been paying attention. Um, you make a branch, you write the code, you optimize the code, you push it into that branch, you have it reviewed, you fix the, the notes that they've given you, you push again, and then it's merged. So yeah, if you've liked the video, please like and subscribe, it honestly really go a long way. Um, it's free for you, so why not do it, right? Hook your boy up, and it'll just give me more leverage when it comes to negotiating, uh, what do you call it? ad blocks not ad blocks oh my god i don't even know what they're called god damn uh 
sponsorships you know i need that money you guys i i have no money if you made it to the end of this video okay comment below two kissing emojis that way i know that you made it to the end of this video and i will respond uh i'll try to the best of my abilities and uh yeah that's all i really need from you okay thank you so much for watching happy coding and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye